downtown LA. It's the Will Joey Gamer Show. Boom shakalaka. What is an instruction manual? Well, it's the place you go to find out how to play the game, right? Or maybe you don't know the controls. It's it's the instructions to the game you just bought. Well, it's that and it's so much more. Instruction manuals used to be filled with all kinds of backstory and lore, awesome artwork, and there's even a little place for you to put your notes in case you got, you know, you need a place to put notes. Like for games like Super Metroid, you're probably gonna need notes for that game. Instruction booklets were like this introduction to a world you were about to get involved in. And they often had personality, like Donkey Kong Country. The instruction booklet for Donkey Kong Country had Cranky Kong, and he was constantly belittling you just like he would in the game. There were usually little sections that would show you bad guys from the game, or in the Donkey Kong Country one, for example, they would show you those weird 3D renders that the game was made out of that looked better pixelated than they did actually in 3D. They looked a little weird. Some instruction manuals, like Zelda, for example, had all kinds of cool backstory and stuff that you otherwise wouldn't know unless you watched the opening cutscene, which most kids were just gonna skip out on. I mean, look at some of these monsters. These monster designs look really cool. This one looks like my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, that was a joke. Some instruction manuals, like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VII, had little strategy guides in the back. So in case you didn't know how to play the game at first, it kind of would walk you through the first part of the game. For some instruction booklets, it's kind of a good idea to use the table of contents, because otherwise you could see things in the game that you probably weren't intended to see until you actually saw them in the game. Super Metroid, for example, shows you some of the boss fights that you see on your isolated adventure, and it's, it kind of runs the magic if you don't see them in the game and you see them in here first. As a kid, if I was lucky, I would get one of these instruction booklets with my blockbuster case that held my game, and so on the way home when my mom was driving, I could read these on the way and kind of get a little sneak peek of what I was about to get myself into. Hell, I was such a nerd that I used to bring instruction manuals and strategy guides to school, and I would read them, like, whenever it was raining outside. Instead of going outside and play, we had to assign ourselves something to read, and I would read instruction manuals and strategy guides. You know, artwork was really important to get the player ready for the forthcoming adventure. Ugh. That was especially the case with PlayStation 1 games. Because the instruction manual was the cover. You know, box art back in the day used to be super important. Back before the internet was readily available and it was a mouse click or a thumb press away, this is kind of what you had to base your purchases off of. Unless you had some kind of cool magazine like Nintendo Power or some other kind of video game magazine that gave you the inside scoop, then this is kind of what you had to look at whenever you're at the rental store or looking for something on your birthday. It was box art. Some games even kind of purposely made their artwork eye-catching, for the better or for worse. Some games like Phalanx on the Super Nintendo, totally whack, and I think that kind of came back to bite him in the butt. Let's look at the standard today. If you even still purchase your games physically, chances are it's not going to come with an instruction booklet. It might not come with anything at all except the disc to play it. But some games, which this is the sad part, actually comes with advertisements to buy more of their stuff before you've even had a chance to play their game. It's kind of sad. Back in the day when you used to buy a game, you could look forward to your games to be packaged with all kinds of cool instruction manuals and artwork. Some, some games would even come with posters. Some still do that today, like Skyrim, for example, still comes with a map poster. But every Rockstar game back in the day, Vice City, Grand Theft Auto 3, Max Payne, games like that, they all came with posters you could put up in your room. Like whenever you're a teenager and you want to show your mom you have all kinds of attitude and you kill hookers on Grand Theft Auto. Sorry, mom. These days, box art doesn't really matter, so, I mean, they can put whatever they want on their, their game case. Chances are, you're probably not buying it physically anyway, you're probably buying it digitally. But if you are buying it physically, chances are you might like the alternate covers that they make for these games. For example, God of War, Spider-Man, and even Wolfenstein 2. I can... I've changed all mine to the alternate covers. They just look better than the originals. I don't know why, but I just... I like these on my shelf. I'm a nerd. I guess what I'm trying to say is... I miss that, that, that wonder that you used to get from going to the rental store, looking at all the rows of games, and having to choose which one looked the coolest because you had no idea what these games were. Blockbuster or rental stores were just a place you went to get games because your parents weren't going to buy you a new game till either your birthday or Christmas, if you're like me. I mean, if you got games all the time, good for you, but as mainly Christmas, I got my new games. 
I miss the cool box art. I miss whenever you would get a game on Christmas morning, you'd rip that son of a bitch open, and then there was a brand new poster you get to tack up on your wall, and you say, yeah, mom, you can't take that down, because that's what represents me. Grand Theft Auto, or Ratchet and Clank, or Jack and Daxter, or whatever the heck poster you want to put up. I miss those days, man. But hey, who am I kidding? I'm an adult now. And I can buy whatever stupid collector's edition I want to now because I'm an idiot and I'm irresponsible. And if I want some kind of stupid collector's edition like Red Dead Redemption 2 that's $200 and doesn't even come with the freaking game, well, I can buy that because I'm an adult now. Click here for other things. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next episode. What's it going to be? I don't know. Is it, another, is it going to be another Relics of the Past video? Do you like these things? Is anyone even watching? I don't know. Tell me in the comments. I'll talk to you. I want some people to talk to on the internet. See you next time. <laughs>